Okay, Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. Good morning, Doctor. Okay, sorry for the delay. Alright, so um, last week we have learned about um, some basic uh, introduction about root lockers. And um, I also have explained to you why we need root lockers. And um, we also learned about how we can uh, plot the complex number in which uh, when you convert the trans function into frequency domain, then every term of S will be a complex number. And this complex number uh, can be uh, represented uh, using its magnitude and also uh, the angle. And today we are going to look at how we can sketch a root locus without uh, having to generate uh, a table as what I've shown last week. Okay? So last week, basically, uh, we do it manually. We plot, uh, we calculate uh, each pole for each uh, different uh, gain K value. And then we plot all of the poles in S plane. Then we get this uh, root locus. So today we are going to learn about uh, how to sketch root locus without having to do all of the uh, tedious uh, steps. So after completing this lecture, you will be able to sketch a root locus by applying rules for refining root locus sketch, and then determine uh, several or uh, several properties of the root locus, such as the asymptotes, breakaway, break-in points, j omega, j w axis crossing, and also angle of departure and arrival. All right, uh, let's review a bit about root locus. So let's say if you have a, trans, uh, a block diagram shown uh, here. So it's a uh, feedback system. So you have a forward trans function with gain K and GS, and then a feedback, uh, feedback trans function, which is HS. Then we can find the closed loop trans function by uh, simplifying the block diagram. And then we take the denominator. So it's also known as the characteristic equation. So it's simply one plus KGH and you get this um, uh, equation based on the uh, block diagram that I've shown earlier and then equals zero so that we can find the uh, poles, poles of the closed loop transfer function. So when we equal equate it to zero, then we can rearrange and then get this uh, equation here. So what we want to do is that we want to see all of the roots of this uh, equation for k equals zero and for k equals infinity. So what happened to the value of s when k equals zero and when k equals infinity? Then uh, the root locus will start at k equals zero and then end at k equals infinity. So if you uh, use MATLAB to plot this root locus, then you get something like uh, shown in this figure. So the root locus uh, is represented by the red uh, red arrows here. Okay, so uh, when we put k equals zero into this equation, then we get s equals minus two, minus four, and minus five. And then when we put k equals infinity, then uh, the value of s will be minus one, minus three, and infinity. So this I will uh, tell you more later. So what happened is that um, we want to find the poles when k equals zero and when k equals infinity. So there are two sets of poles. So first one here is when k equals zero 
and the second set is when k equals infinity and then from there we can plot on the uh, s plane and then sketch the root locus okay so that's the basic um uh, basic rules for sketching root locus but there are eight more rules to make the root locus more refined okay? or to sketch the root locus um, better okay? better than uh, doing like this okay so rule number one so uh, the number of branches of the root locus or branches uh, also we can say the number of lines okay number of lines of the root locus equals the number of closed loop poles. So let's say if you have uh, this uh, figure here. So in this figure, we have two poles, one at minus 10 and one at zero. Okay, we have two poles. So when you have two poles, meaning that you have two branches of the root locus. So if you look at this figure, the first branch is starting from here and then go up and then another branch starting from here and then go down. So we have only two branches. So let's look at a uh, previous uh, example. Let's say in this example, when we calculate uh, poles, so when we calculate uh, poles at k equals zero, we get three different poles minus two minus four and minus five so meaning that we have three branches okay, three branches of root locus so from this sketch we can see that there are three branches one is here one here and another one here there are three different lines okay, different branches of the root locus we will see that later in example if uh, you uh, cannot see it right now okay so just take the rules if we have uh, we have uh, the number of branches of the locus equals the number of closed loop poles. And then rule number two is that the root locus is symmetric about the real axis. So if you look at this figure again, uh, it must be symmetric about this uh, real axis. Okay, so you can draw your root locus, let's say starting here go up here and then one starting here go down here so this red colored here will be not symmetric okay so you must make sure it is symmetric maksudnya dia macam uh, mirror image to one another so yang atas ni uh, mirror image dengan yang bawah ni okay. so it must be symmetric about the real axis only so not symmetric with uh, J omega axis, but only real axis. Okay, so that's rule number two. And then rule number three is that the root locus begin at the finite and infinite poles of GHS and GH and ends at the finite and infinite zeros. So here we need to find the poles and then find the zeros. Okay, so we need to find poles and also the zeros of the transfer function. And then the root locus must uh, start from poles. So start uh, poles, start from poles, and then uh, end at zeros. So for example, here we have two poles here and two zeros. So in order to draw the or to sketch the root locus, so here we have two poles meaning that we have two branches, okay? So we have two poles, so we have two uh, branches. And then we have two zeros as well. So one of the pole will go to the one of the zeros and another pole will go to another zero because we only have two branches. So here we can sketch like maybe this one, uh, it goes to this uh, zero and then this pole it can go to this uh, zero okay so why it is circle in shape uh, later on 
there will be more rules that uh, justify the shape to be circle. Okay, so what you need to know is that uh, for rule number three, the root locus always start at poles and then end at zeros. And then rule number four is uh, slightly complicated. So on the real axis, the root locus exists to the left of an odd number of finite open loop poles and zeros. Okay, so this is um, need a bit of um, calculating, okay? calculating um, uh, by, by hand, not saying tak perlu tulis tangan pun tak perlu. Okay, so what this sentence means is that let's say if we have this uh, two poles here and two zeros here, so um, you want to determine at which uh, on the real axis at which uh, position the road locus exists. Is it here or is it from minus two to minus one or is it from minus three to minus two? or from minus four to minus three, or from minus four onwards. So how to determine that is using this uh, rule number four. So firstly, you need to uh, determine the, the number of uh, finite open loop poles and zeros. So uh, from uh, in this range, from here until uh, minus one, From uh, negative, uh, from positive infinity to minus one here, there is no uh, poles here. No poles because a uh, pulse starts at minus one. So from here until infinity, there is no poles. So when you have no poles, then at this region here, the root locus does not exist on the real axis. And then in between this region, from minus two to minus one, we have only one pole here. So minus two, uh, the pole here at minus two, uh, only exists at minus two onwards. So here we have minus one pole. So we only have uh, one, uh, one pole only. So one, one pole means uh, we have uh, an odd number, lah. odd number. Okay, so when we have an odd amount of pole, then at this location here, there will be a root locus on this axis. Okay, so from here, minus three to minus two. So we have two poles here, minus one and minus two. There are two poles. So meaning that uh, there are even number of poles, okay? Dua, dua maksudnya even, okay? So when there's an even number of poles, meaning that here at this location here, there is no root locus on this axis. And then from minus four to minus three, we have one pole here, two poles here, and one zero here. So kita ada dua pole plus one zero. So we have three, okay. total three. So three is an odd number. So meaning that we have a root locus on this axis. And then starting from minus four to infinity, we have two poles and we have two zeros. So we have two poles plus two zeros. Meaning that we have uh, four, okay, at the part. So part is an even number. So when an even number, meaning that there will be no uh, root locus on this uh, real axis at this portion, okay. So later on, we will see more of this example if you don't get it now, okay. <laughs> okay, rule number five, uh, the root locus approaches a straight line as asymptote, okay? So we have a straight line known as asymptote as the locus approaches infinity. 
So uh, root locus has an asymptote. Okay, so asymptote, uh, the root locus cannot cross the asymptote when the root locus approaches infinity. So to determine the asymptote, we can use this uh, formula. So we need to find the real axis intercept of the asymptote using this formula. So the real axis intercept equals the sum of finite poles minus the sum of finite zeros divided by this symbol means the number, the number of finite poles minus the number of finite zeros. And then after finding the real axis intercept, we can find the angle of the asymptote. So the angle equals to k plus one times pi divided by the number of finite poles minus the number of finite zeros. Okay, let's look at an example how to use this and what is the asymptote really means. Okay, so how we can sketch the asymptote and then how this asymptote can help you to uh, sketch the root locus. Okay, so let's say you are given this uh, system. So you want to uh, sketch the root locus of this system. Okay, so for trans function is k times s plus 3 divided by s times s plus 1 times s plus 2 times s plus 4. So firstly, before you uh, do anything, you need to find the poles and zeros. Okay. So uh, when you have uh, this kind of system, which is a unity feedback, so this is unity feedback system. So for a unity feedback system, you can find the uh, closed loop poles simply by finding the poles from the uh, forward transformation GS here. Okay, only for unity feedback. Okay? So for a different type of feedback, you need to uh, use the concept k equals zero and k equals infinity. Uh, later on, maybe if there is an example, I will show how show you how to do it. Okay, so here uh, the poles will be uh, s equals zero, minus one, minus two, and minus four. And then the zeros will be minus three. Okay, so uh, I hope you still remember how to find poles and zeros. And then here we have four poles, okay? So when we have four poles, meaning that we have four branches. So this is rule number one. Rule number one states that the number of branches equals the number of poles. So we have four poles, meaning that we have four branches. And then the number of zero is only one. So we must, we must make sure that the number of poles and zeros are the same. So here we have four poles. So poles, there are four poles and we have only one zeros, which is minus three. So because there is only one zero, then we need to add more, uh, three more uh, zeros to make sure that poles and zeros are the same. So how to add the poles, uh, I mean, how to add the zeros. So you simply add uh, three infinity here. So meaning that um, the poles, one of the poles will go to uh, minus three and the other three poles will go to the infinity. Okay, so this is rule number two. The root locus will start at pole and then end at zeros. So you must have the same amount of poles and zeros and one of the poles will go to minus three and the other will go to infinity. Okay, now let's look at uh, how to determine the asymptote. So we know now that uh, there are four poles and one zeros. So we can determine the uh, real axis intercept of the asymptote. So the formula is the sum of finite poles minus sum of finite zeros divided by number of poles minus number of zero. 
So post here, we have zero, minus one, minus two, and minus four. So you just add up all of them. Minus one, minus two, minus four, minus zero. Or plus, is it? And then minus the number, uh, the sum of zeros. So we only have one finite zero. Finite zero means yang bukan infinity, okay? So this is finite zero, minus three. So you minus, minus three. And divided by the number of poles, minus number of zero. So we have four poles, minus one zero. So you calculate, you get the real axis intercept at minus four over three. And then we can find the angle now, angle of uh, asymptote using this formula, 2k plus 1 times pi divided by number of poles minus number of zero. So here we have k. So how to determine the value of k? It's actually depending on uh, the amount of angle. So when you calculate the angle, you get uh, theta a uh, bigger or equals to pi then uh, you stop uh, calculate. Okay, you start k with zero. So for example here, when k equals zero, then the first angle at pi over three. So it's actually this angle. Okay. And then you increase k, so k equals one. So you get theta equals pi. So it's this angle. And then you increase k, so you get k equals 2, and then theta equals 5 pi over 3. So it's uh, this angle. Okay, so you get 3 is asymptote. And then when you increase k equals 3, so you get theta a equals, so theta a equals, 7 pi over 3. So 7 pi over 3. So 7 pi over 3 is already exceeding 2 pi. Okay, more than 2 pi. So we stop calculating and we don't take this angle because it's already more than 2 pi. So we only take this 3 as the angle of asymptote. Okay, so the asymptote here, there will be 3 uh, lines. So the first line here, second here, and then this is the third one. So there are three asymptotes starting from this uh, real axis intercept, which is this value, and the angle is determined from this calculation here. Okay. Any question before we proceed? Doktor, yang center tu dapat macam mana? Sorry? Yang uh, dekat pol, eh, uh, dekat pol negatif satu hmm. Kan center dia tu kan? Yang mana eh, doktor punya tu? Ni eh? Aha Ah ini, yang real, real axis Mana? Yang, yang real axis intersect Oh, oh ok ok Okay, so macam uh, lukisan yang lebih detail ni, uh, kita akan tengok nanti uh, lebih banyak rules. So for now, uh, uh, try to understand uh, the first uh, five rules until now lah. Okay? Uh, the first four rules basically uh, just um, more theoretical, doesn't involve calculation. But starting rule number five, until rule number eight, there will be uh, uh, calculations uh, okay? like asymptotes and so on. So uh, the asymptote uh, is important in order to determine uh, the location at which the 
root locus will not cross. Okay. So here, when we uh, sketch the asymptote and then sketch the root locus, you can see that the blue line here, the root locus, will not cross this asymptote as it reach infinity. Okay. Okay, now uh, let's look at rule number six. So rule number six is about J omega axis crossing. So for example, uh, in this root locus, we have this crossing here. We have this crossing at the location at which the root locus will cross the J uh, omega axis. So we want to determine this location here. So this uh, location of crossing is actually the point that separate uh, stable and unstable system. So we know that uh, from, look, from looking at the S-plane, so if your pulse is located on uh, right uh, left hand side, then the system is stable. So if your uh, pulse located on right hand side, then the system is unstable. So what happens if your uh, pulse located on the J omega axis? So on this axis, the system is marginally stable. Okay, so we can determine the stability of system simply by looking at the location of root locus. Okay, so if your root locus is located on right hand side then it's unstable if your root locus on left hand side then the system will be stable and if your root locus is on the j omega axis then the system is marginally stable so later on, when you do your uh, project part part three you need to adjust the uh, position of a point okay? So let's say you are given this point. So you need to uh, gerakkan point ni, uh, move this point. So because this point here is on unstable region. So you need to move it uh, until this location to make the system stable. But when you move it here, then you will get different value of gain K. Okay? Then the gain K may, may affect your system by uh, introducing overshoot, uh, damping, and so on. Okay. So now uh, let's go back to the point how to find the J omega axis crossing. Okay, so, how to find the J omega axis crossing? So, uh, let's uh, use the same example as previous um, uh, previous one. So here we have this uh, same uh, block diagram. So in order to find the J omega as is crossing, we need to find the closed loop trans function. We need to find TS, which is the closed loop trans function. And then we get this. Then from here, we take the denominator and then generate a rock width table. Okay, we generate the route with stable, calculate until the end. Then uh, the pure imaginary roots or the uh, J omega axis can be determined when there is a zero row. So for a zero row, the only row that can have zero row is a uh, row S1 here. Why? Because if you take uh, S0, then to make this zero, k equals zero. Okay, so you don't want k equals zero because basically that's no gain. Okay, there is no gain. So similar to S2, so S2, you have this 21 times k here. So to make this column zero, k equals zero. So you cannot take that value. So the only uh, location that entire row can be zero 
is S1. And then from there, uh, you calculate the value of K to make this term zero. So you get K equals 9.65. So that's the value of gain K at imaginary as this. Now we need to determine um, the value of S or J omega at the J omega as this. So to determine that, you substitute this value into rho S2. So substitute K into rho S2. So we get this value of S. So the system is stable within this uh, range. And then at K equals 9.65, the system is marginally stable. Oscillating at frequency, uh, not this one, okay? Frequency 1.559. So this is the frequency of the marginally stable oscillation. And this gain here is the gain at that uh, J omega at this crossing. So if we look at... Um, um not this one so later we will see more example on this so uh to determine the j omega as this crossing you need to use a uh, rubber width criteria finding the value of k and then finding the value of s so this value of s is the location of the j omega as this crossing So I think it's uh, the same as this one. Um, yeah, uh, this one. So it's the same uh, transfer function. So the J omega as this crossing is somewhere here, which is about uh, 1.59. And also negative 1.59. But uh, later we will see example. Okay, so rule number seven is the breakaway and breaking points. So here in this uh, figure, uh, in this root locus, we have breakaway and breaking points. So breakaway is the point at which the root locus going out, going out from the j uh, from the real axis okay so this is the point the uh, root locus going out from real axis okay jam yeah, jam Okay. Okay, so breakaway point is the point where the root locus going out from the real axis. And then the breaking point is the point where the root locus going into the real axis. Okay. So need going out 
and this going into the real exist. Uh, so sorry, saya kacau, but uh, saya tak presenting. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, ni nampak. Nampak, nampak. Okay, so uh, breakaway is the point where the root locus going out and then break in the points where the root locus break into the real axis, okay? So the angle there always 90 degree, okay? So they're going out 90 degree, they're going in pun 90 degree. So ada cara nak kira dia lah, okay, ada formula dia. Okay, so this point is uh, important because we want to know um, dia punya shape later, okay? Macam uh, for this example, kenapa dia dapat uh, circle shape? Okay, so the circle shape is because of this breakaway and breaking points, okay? So how to find breakaway and breaking points? So this is the formula, okay, to find the breakaway and breaking points. So the formula says that the summation of 1 over sigma minus 0 equals the summation of 1 over sigma minus 4, okay? So Z then P and P are the zero and poles okay zero and poles and the sigma is your breakaway or breaking points okay, kita tengok example okay, so let's say you want to determine this point from this root locus okay so firstly from this root locus uh, we can determine the poles and zero okay from the root locus so the pole is minus one and minus two and then the zeros is uh three and five okay so uh uh always represent your poles using um uh cross and then your poles using circle okay So we have two poles and two zeros, and then use this formula to determine the breakaway and breaking points. Okay, so one over sigma minus three. So zero, zero three, three plus one over sigma minus five. So this is the first part. Hasil tambah satu over sigma minus zero. So one over sigma minus three plus one over sigma minus five. Kalau ada banyak zero. Tambah lagi plus 1 over sigma minus something, plus 1 over sigma minus something, and so on. Equals 1 over sigma minus poles. So sigma minus minus 1, so you get plus 1. Plus 1 over sigma minus minus 2, so you get plus 2. And then uh, simplify this. Okay. Uh, simplify this using uh, if you calculate manually uh, guna konsep pecahan yang kita belajar masa sekolah rendah okay, so pecahan dia sekarang ada simbol so when you simplify you get this quadratic equation so you can easily solve that in a calculator so you get sigma equals minus 1.45 and sigma 3.82. Sketch this on S plane. So you get this uh, location here. So it, this point is about negative 1.45 and this point is about 3.8, 3.82. Okay, so itulah location of breakaway and breakaway points. Okay, so far, any uh, anything you want to ask? Hello, okay. Oh, sure. 
Rasa uh, untuk post uh, break away zero break in aja. Sorry sorry. Oh z uh, break away post, post break in zero, zero. break in. Ah uh, sort of lah. Oh, okay okay. Um, I think not always. Um, it just depends on when you calculate this later, you get this point, this value. Then you sketch on S plane. You tahu lah dia dekat mana tu. So it doesn't always like uh, break away four poles, break away four zeros. Okay, thank you. Sir. Okay, so uh, uh, there are many rules uh, yang kita dah uh, covered and maybe I'm going too fast but uh, uh, I think uh, by showing example it's easier to go later. So uh, I'm sorry in advance if I'm going too fast for this explaining the rules. Okay, because um, if explaining this rule uh, even slow macam mana pun uh, tanpa application pun tak boleh juga okay. okay so rule number 8 is about finding the angle of departure and arrival okay so this rule number 8 only applies when you have a complex complex poles and zeros so so far our poles and zeros are located on the real axis maksudnya the real number okay minus 3 minus 2 so what happened if your post is here so here is uh, s equals uh, about um, minus 1 plus j so here your post is in complex number form okay other imaginary values okay so we have also post down here so when your post is uh, imaginary value, then it will have this angle of departure and arrival. So angle of departure for complex poles, angle of arrival for complex zeros. Okay, so this is an example. So op let's say you have this system that has poles minus 3, minus 1 plus j, and minus 1 minus j. Okay, this poles, tiga poles, and zeros at minus 2. Then they letak dua lagi infinity to make uh, the amount of poles and zeros equal. So here we have three poles, meaning that we have three branches of root locus. And then we can calculate other things like uh, asymptote, uh, j omega axis, and so on. But in this example, they nak kira angle of departure. So the complex poles will have similar angle of departure due to symmetry. So this uh, poles here and this poles here will have the same angle of departure. So about symmetry, that is rules number three. Okay, so rule number three or rule number four, I forgot. Saying that the root locus is symmetry about a uh, real axis. Okay, so it's enough if you can calculate this angle only, this first angle theta one. So you don't have to calculate this angle. So let's say theta, because this angle and theta one here has the same value. Okay, so the formula is this. Uh, kita tengok contoh. So we go back to the previous slide punya example. So how to determine uh, this angle theta. Okay, so this angle theta is the angle of departure. The y angle of departure because it measures the angle from this imaginary pole. Okay, from the complex pole. Okay, kalau the complex zero, the angle of arrival okay so to calculate theta we need to calculate the angle 
from all other poles and zeros to this pole. Okay, so for example, theta one measured from this pole. Theta two measured from zero minus two d. And the third angle theta three measured from the pole minus three. Okay, so let's say kalau kata ada ada uh, pole kat sini lagi, ada dua lagi. Then you also need to calculate this angle and also this angle. Okay. So measure all the angle from all other poles and zeros. Okay. So kita ada tiga poles and one zero. So to measure this ang uh, the angle of uh, departure, we measure this angle angle from this pole, angle from this zero, and angle from this pole. So there will be three angles that you need to calculate. And then you calculate theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 using uh, trigonometry. So always uh, calculate the angle from positive uh, real axis. So for example, from this pole, theta 1 is just 90 degree. Okay, so they betul-betul berada dekat bawah uh, this uh, pole. Okay, so it's just 90 degree. And then theta 2, you can simply use tangent. Okay, tangent uh, tinggi ni divided by this length. And then uh, minus tangent of this ang uh, angle, okay, tangent juga. And then the formula states that uh, angle of departure equals 180 minus hasil tambah sudut pole minus hasil tambah sudut zero. Okay, sum of angle of poles minus sum of angle of zero. So theta one and theta two are angle of poles. Eh, theta one, theta three, sorry, theta two is the angle of zero. So that's why sini tolak, okay. Oh, this ni satu, okay. So, sunan dia uh, hanya theta tu, tolak theta tu, okay. Okay, so you calculate. You get this value, negative 2.1.57. So, negative maksudnya dia measure uh, clockwise, okay. So, you uh, just simply uh, 360 plus this to get theta. So theta here, 108.4. Dia ada 0.5 tu, dapat mana dia tu? So 0.5 tu, um, 1, divided by this length. Sebab so, X ni kat sini. So kita kena ukur panjang ni. Dengan panjang ni. So theta 3 equals tangent minus 1, 1 bahagi 2. Faham? Okay, Dr. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so uh, uh, usually soalan angle of departure ni jarang-jarang tanya lah masa exam. Tapi boleh je dia nak tanya. Selalunya uh, simple je, okay? kira angle simple-simple. So that's why I told you last week, uh, make sure you understand how to uh, calculate the angle. Okay? So calculate of the angle ni, uh, it depends on you. Nak guna tangent boleh, nak guna cosine, sine, up to you. Okay? And then um, based also on how you look the angle. Okay? Kadang-kadang you nak kira uh, sudut ni ke contoh lah. Okay, you can 180 minus theta 3 or you can 90 degree plus uh, something else. Okay, so the uh, based on how you look the angle. Okay, okay so pengiraan orang tak tak semestinya sama. Okay, mungkin kawan awak buat cara kira lain. Awak buat cara kira lain tapi jawapan akhir dia mesti sama. Okay, so that's the example for rule number eight. Okay, so dah habis example untuk rules dia. Okay, so rules ada lapan. 
Kalau tak ada slide summary Aku buat slide Okay so uh, now let's uh, let's take a look at example number one okay, before we finish the class. So let's look at example number one. Okay so example number one tadi sama macam uh, previous example okay. Tapi kita uh, we will see this in more detail how to determine the angle of departure if there is any angle of departure. How to determine the uh, J omega as is crossing, breakaway point, uh, asymptote, and then use the four first rules, uh, branches, symmetry, and so on. Okay. So uh, let's say you are given this GS, and then you are given a unity feedback system. So when you see the word unity feedback system, always remember uh, unity feedback system, they are much in So this is R, this is your output, R is input, C is output, and then this is the uh, summing junction. And unity feedback system, the cut feedback there, has a unity transfer function. Okay, Unity transfer function, maksudnya HS there equals 1. Okay, So always remember, uh, unity feedback system having this form, Okay, bentuk dia macam ni. So dia uh, mungkin give you only by wording, okay? Dia tak nak, uh, dia tak show you uh, how the block diagram looks like, okay? So when you see the word unity feedback system, then it's this uh, system, okay? Okay, so you are given this unity feedback system with forward transpansion GS, determine the root local sketch, okay? And then find the asymptote J omega as is crossing. And then find the value of k that will make system marginally stable. So usually when you have this question, uh, kalau soalan tu suruh sketch dulu, uh, usually what I did, I will calculate all the properties first, like asymptote, j omega s is crossing, uh, k value, uh, if there is angle of departure, uh, kira dulu. Because uh, sometimes when you sketch first, mungkin um, bila dah sketch baru sedap lemak uh, Tak cross uh, J omega exist Macam salah ke ataupun uh, Ada asymptote sebenarnya Tapi tak cari dulu So uh, please determine All the properties first before you sketch Okay <coughs> So uh, based on rules Number one until number four So firstly kita cari uh, Poles and zeros Okay Okay, so kita tengok balik sini. So first, we determine the poles and zeros. So for unity feedback system, you can determine the uh, closed loop poles and zero simply by looking at GS only. Okay, because it's unity feedback system. So unity feedback system je boleh. Okay. So for non-unity feedback system, you need to find the closed loop transfer function. Okay, kena cari TCRT, okay, kena cari TS. But because it's a unity feedback system, you don't have to find TS. You can determine pole and zero, simply looking at GS. So the pole will be uh, zero, minus two, minus three, and minus four. And then the zero will be minus one. Okay. And then based on rule number one, we have four poles. <coughs> Kita ada empat poles. So meaning that we have four branches. And then uh, we only have one zero here, which is minus one. And then we know that uh, the root locus will start at O and then will end at a zero. So kita kena tambah uh, three more zeros to make them equal. Okay? So infinity, infinity and also infinity. So from here we know that one of the root locus will go to minus one. And the other three root locus akan pergi ke infinity. Maksudnya dia garisan yang Panjang lah, okay, ke infinity. 
So we can imagine the shape already sort of, okay. And then after you determine the poles and zeros and the number of branches, then you can sketch uh, the poles and zeros on the S plane. And that was uh, what this slide actually did, okay. So they uh, sketch all the poles and the zero. It just sketch on your S plane. And then from here, you can use the rule number three, the odd number thing. So starting from this value until this, you have no poles or no zero. So from this point onwards, there will be no root lockers on the real axis. And then from this point, uh, from this point until minus one, <coughs> you have uh, one pole here, ada satu pole, which is zero. So satu is an odd number. So when you have odd number of pole, then you have root locus at this range here on the real axis. And then from here, you have two, uh, two things, one pole and one zero. So it's an even amount, okay, jumlah yang genap. So you don't have a, a root locus on this real axis. From here until uh, infinity, you have two poles and one zero. So ada tiga, tiga is uh, ganjil. Then you have a root locus here. So that's why ada garis merah sini. And then starting here, you have three poles and one zero. So even number, you don't have anything on the real axis. And then uh, from here until uh, infinity, you have uh, lima, okay, lima benda, four poles and one zero. So at, it's an even number. So you have root locus starting from here until infinity, okay. So that's why ada anak panas sini showing that the root locus starting from here it goes to infinity then root locus to the cat real exists Doctor. okay so yep yang menentukan even dengan odd tu pole kan a pole dan zero pole dan zero sekarang uh -huh. macam daripada infinity ke negatif tiga tu tiga pole satu zero Lepas tu? Dia ada dua pole sini. Yang ni tak kira. Oh yang tu tak kira? Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Alright, alright. Dia kira, dia, dia kira yang uh, sebelum sampai pole tu. Uh, uh, macam tu. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Okay, so uh, sketch yang atas ni, yang uh, this figure, uh, actually shows you uh, the location kat mana ada root locus tu on the real axis. So we now can imagine that uh, the root locus tu punya bentuk already okay so uh, one of the root locus going to infinity one of the branch which is this one is already going to infinity and we know that uh, the other two branches will go to infinity as well and one branch will go to uh, the zero okay sebab kita ada empat poles dengan satu zero tadi and if you look here Yang anak panah ni, kita kita tahu kat area ni ada root locus on the real axis and dia letak anak panah here to show that uh, the root locus branch starting from this pole will go to this zero minus one. So we know that, uh, we know two branches uh, direction already. So one branch starting from minus four going to infinity another branch starting from zero going to minus one so kita tinggal dua branches je lagi nak tahu location dia dekat mana but we know that the two last branches here will go to infinity sebab tadi kita ada tiga infinity dengan satu uh, finite zero 
Okay, so now these two branches will starting from this uh, two poles here. So they can going to infinity, meaning that they can um, keluar dari uh, real axis. So other breakaway points. Okay, there will be a breakaway point. But I think in this example, they tak calculate the breakaway points code. Okay, but we'll see. I don't remember the example. Okay, so rule number five is about finding the asymptote. <clears throat> so we know that this root locus will go, uh, these branches of root locus will go to infinity. So maksudnya ada asymptote. Okay, maksudnya the branch will not cross the asymptote when it goes to infinity. So you need to calculate the asymptote. <clears throat> okay, so to calculate the asymptote, simply use the formula. So you get this uh, real axis intercept which is uh, somewhere here. And then uh, you can calculate the theta A as well, the angle of uh, asymptote. So you have three angle uh, of asymptote. So when you uh, use, uh, so this is K or L, okay, equal up with this symbol you know. So here when you use L equals three, you get uh, theta equals uh, seven pi over three. So exceeding 2 pi, so you stop calculating. You don't take this value. <coughs> okay, so we get this green line represent the asymptote. So the root locus will uh, break away from here. And it won't, uh, it won't cross this asymptote line. Okay. So the locus uh, bentuk straight line, but it's actually a curve, okay. So how they dapat ni, the kira, uh, I think in next slide code, okay. So here, this point here is your breakaway point. So you can calculate as well if uh, the question asks you, but uh, apparently in this question, it tak minta breakaway point. It doesn't ask for breakaway point. It only asks for uh, asymptote and J omega as is crossing. <clears throat> but I think, you know, let's say in final exam, you will uh, be asked for breakaway point. So you can calculate your breakaway point. Okay, so now uh, let's calculate the J omega as is crossing. I think it's on the next slide. So to calculate the J omega as is crossing, you need to find the closed loop transfer function because you need to use Rutherwitz criteria. So remember to calculate J omega as is crossing, uh, you need to use Rutherwitz criteria. So you need to find uh, TS, simplify, then you get this and take the denominator and create the Rutherwitz table. Any uh, K squared. And then um, general rules here, yeah? uh, rules um, secara general, we take uh, S1, okay? So we take S1 and then calculate the value of K. So we get K equals 202. I think uh, uh, pengiraan ni mungkin salah, okay, value ni. I don't remember somewhere, but uh, I think last semester they said the calculation is not correct. Uh, but later you can check lah, okay. Saya tak ingat dah mana salah. Okay, so you calculate the value of K. So this is the gain at marginally stable. And then use this value of K dalam uh, S squared. So how to use that? You generate this uh, equation. So 210 minus K s square plus k k s not okay sama macam uh, yang chapter rockhowitz dulu kita nak create uh, polynomial okay polynomial when you have a zero rows okay uh, macam tu lah okay. substitute the k from this k then you get uh, this s value 
Okay, so this is stable. Okay, tiba 140. So, salah kira kan ni. Okay, so this uh, S uh, 5.02J is actually the uh, J omega crossing here. So, make sure when you calculate uh, the J omega as is crossing. So, punya S ada plus minus. Okay, ada dua. So, sometimes student kira dia buat some mistake. Dia end up equation ni. Uh, let's say 210 minus K S tak ada square. Okay, macam ni contoh lah. So, when you get this kind of equation, you know already that you fucked up. Okay. So, salah kira. Uh, check balik mana yang salah. So make sure it's a quadratic equation because your S will be plus minus, ada dua. Okay. And then uh, one more thing is that it's an imaginary number. So when you calculate your S later, make sure that uh, S square equals some negative value before you uh, square root kan dia. Kalau dapat positive value, uh, salah kira lah, okay. Okay, so uh, I think that's it for example one. Uh, next week, kita akan tengok example two and example three in more detail and we will discuss tutorial. Uh, ada example three ke? Okay, sampai example two je. So, um, so uh, maybe for now, uh, try to understand um, example one. If you have time, you can go to example two. Okay, to understand example two. So, try to get um, biasakan diri macam nak kira uh, J omega as is crossing The breaking point, the angle of departure Asymptote and so on And also uh, Try to understand uh, The the rules Okay Especially uh, rule number one Two, three and four And then masa tutorial uh, Kita Dia harap lagi faham lah Masa discuss tutorial nanti Okay, any uh, question before we end the class? No, sir. Okay, uh, if you uh, have no question, I just, I would like to remind you, you can start your project three, part three. Uh, I think the due date will be on week 13. So this is week 11. So next week, week 12. So the due date for uh, project 3 will be week 13 somewhere in the middle. Okay. So you can try uh, start now. Uh, you can start with MATLAB first for project number 3. And uh, when to calculate the man manual, when you want to do the manual calculation, maybe uh, it's better if you can uh, look at the tutorial later next week. Okay, so if you have no question, then uh, see you again, inshallah, next week. Okay, thank you so much. Assalamualaikum. Goodbye. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you so much. Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>